Hello everyone, welcome back to The Nerdy Novelist. And in this video, we're doing the same thing that we did in yesterday's video, where we were brainstorming a novel with Claude, except this time we're gonna be doing it in ChatGPT and discussing some of the differences that I have noticed so far between the two language models. In this video, it, I actually already recorded this video, but there was an error in the audio and the audio didn't get recorded and so, Rather than try and do this over again and pretend I'm doing it for the first time, which would not feel very authentic because uh, I did a lot of crafting of this story idea and now I have a good idea where the story idea is going to go and I couldn't really just recreate that uh, over again. And so rather than try to do that again, I'm going to actually just walk you through the prompts that I had and which ones I used and how it prompted my brainstorming and all of that here. This is gonna be a separate novella from the one that I'm writing in Claude. Uh, they are related, they are part of the same universe. In fact, all of my fiction is part of the same universe to one degree or another. And um, you'll see some of the similarities if you go back and watch that one and watch this one as well. Uh, but um, basically, this is how I started prompting it. I said, you are a best-selling author and developmental editor. So we started with the role, right? You have 20 years of experience in the field, helping other authors develop their own ideas. Your task today is to help me refine and flesh out a story idea for a novella. Here is the idea I have so far. So we're using that fits framework, right? We're using the identity here, the task here. We don't need a style on this one because we're just brainstorming. We're not actually doing any finished writing. And then the framework is pretty much just giving it some boundaries to work with, which in this case is the idea that I have so far, um, which is this should take place in a Viking era. I want the main character to be Ragnar and it should involve Ragnar fighting a lot of Lovecraftian monsters, possibly some cults involved and possibly Cthulhu involved as well. Cthulhu should not be fully awakened before, during, or at the end of the novel or novella but could still be the catalyst of the novella or exist as a, some kind of existential or otherworldly presence. Can you give me 15 ideas for where I could take this novella? So basically I had the initial concept, but I was lacking a little bit in the actual plot of this novella. I didn't really know what it should be like. I just knew I wanted the character to be Ragnar. I wanted the character to be, or I wanted it to be about Vikings versus Lovecraftian monsters. And uh, I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. This is actually an abandoned story idea by Brandon Sanderson. Okay, he was doing an interview or uh, a uh, con or convention appearance where I think he was talking to his buddy Dan Wells and they were discussing story ideas that he had written down and no longer has any desire to do anything with. And one of them was Vikings versus Cthulhu. And when I heard that, I was just like, oh my gosh. I could do that because of the way my world is set up. Uh, my world is all about mythology and putting mythology together with a, a number of different pulp elements, including uh, Lovecraft's Cthulhu mythos, uh, which I think is re a really fun mythos. And I've been having a fun time putting it together with uh, pretty much all of the other myths and legends from the rest of the world. Um, and this is going to be basically something that could fit inside that universe. And so when I heard that story idea from Brandon Sanderson, I was like, I am going to write that. Um, I never really intended it to be a huge series or anything, but I think a one-off novella is going to be pretty awesome. So we're going to use ChatGPT to write it. Anyway, we're looking for a couple of ideas and I, you know, it gave me a bunch the one that I think I liked the most was this one that says the rune of the abyss. Ragnar finds an ancient rune stone covered in symbols of an unknown origin. He gradually realizes it holds the key to restraining the Lovecraftian ident entity. He needs to decipher the rune stones and confront the cult who seeks it for their own destructive purposes. Now, when I read this, I was just like, okay, that's good. I'm not going to do this exactly like it said here. Uh, but it did kind of prompt me to go in a particular direction, which is often how brainstorming with AI works. It's, it's not necessarily something that you're like, oh, I'm going to use that exact idea because it's not always, the ideas it gives you are not always the best ideas. 
but it can sometimes get your mind thinking in a particular direction and take you down a rabbit hole. And that's kind of what we have here. So it gave me 15. That was really the only one I liked. So I kind of gave it my own spin on that particular idea that I liked. I said, how about Ragnar discovered a single standing stone with runes on it that are unfamiliar? He finds this on an island off the coast of Scotland that was previously not there, meaning it just rose from the sea and is barren, covered in mud, etc. Uh, if you've read the Lovecraftian short story Dagon, that should sound familiar. This is a good premise. Can you help me brainstorm five different endings for this novella? I want to make sure it involves a lot of Vikings and a huge battle between Vikings and Eldritch monsters with lots of action and raging Vikings. So at this point, we're applying the principle I talked about in another video about outlining backwards so we got the initial premise but then the next step is to figure out what's the ending going to be and then it can kind of figure out what goes in between so it gave me a bunch of different things here uh, different endings i think the one that i liked the most here was the awakening which says the runes foretell the partial awakening of a lovecrafting god restrained by the island itself cultists force the awakening and eldritch monsters pour forth Ragnar and his Viking warriors face the nightmare, holding the line to give Ragnar the time to reach the stone. Ragnar invokes the runes, channeling warriors, valor, and spirit, causing the stone to emit a blinding light that banishes the monsters and sends the ent entity back to sleep. So, again, I'm not going to be using this verbatim, but it did get me thinking in the right direction. I like the idea of this big battle of all these monsters coming forth out of this portal, I guess. And the Vikings having to hold the line while they're, while they close it. Um, and so I basically summarized everything that I liked so far. I said, okay, premise. And then I copied and pasted the premise that we had previously into there. And then I added the ending, copied and pasted a little bit of the bits and pieces that I liked about the ending, changed it slightly. And then I said, now can you construct what happens between the beginning and the end of the story. And um, I made the mistake of asking it for like five different ideas of what happens between those two, uh, which kind of messed up my results from this point. Uh, so it gave me a you know generic plot line of what could happen between that, but it only gave me one idea that was a little bit more fleshed out. I wasn't looking for a fleshed out idea. I was just looking for ideas. So I ask it, let's try again and give me 10 ideas for what would happen in the middle of the story. Keep the ideas short as we will flesh them out later. And it tried, it gave me a bunch more, but these are actually kind of just a repeat of what we have up here, which is why I said it sort of messed up the results here. I guess I could have opened up a new chat window and just tried again. Um, but at this point I got distracted and I was just like, I want to know more about Ragnar and the 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 legend slash history, quasi history around Ragnar. And uh, so I started asking like, what time did he live? I started doing a little bit of this brainstorming to figure out the setting, the time period and all that. And so it gave me this bit about how Rath Ragnar Lothbrok is a legendary Norse figure who features prominently in Viking age, old Norse poetry and sagas. It's important to note that there is much debate about among historians about whether he was a real historical figure or a fictional character created in the sagas, yada, 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 yada. Um, it talks about where he was king and some of his greatest conquests, which included Paris. Uh, but then I asked, you know, because I, so far in this premise, we said that this little island that shows up would be off the coast of Scotland. So I asked, what about Scotland? Uh, does he have any involvement there? And it said basically no, no involvement there. And so I said, all right, since this novella is about Ragnar and his adult life, when would you set this novel? Give me a specific year. And even though I asked for a specific year, at first it didn't quite get me something. It said, uh, choosing a precise year for the events of your novella can be challenging as the exact timeline, yada, 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 yada. But it did say here at the end, for the purposes of your novella, let's choose the year 845. This is a historically significant year because it's the year of the siege of Paris, which some sagas attribute to Ragnar. However, in your novella, instead of participating in the siege, Ragnar could be exploring the newly risen island off the coast of Scotland. This could provide an excellent alternative perspective on the historical events of that time. So I thought, okay, that's a good idea. We're going to move it so it's no longer in uh, near Scotland. 
So I said, let's move the location of the island to be somewhere between Denmark and France, a place near England, Scotland, but on the way for Ragnar and his party. They stumble across it after a large storm at the beginning of the novella. With that in mind, can you summarize everything we've concluded so far about this novella? Which is something I had done with Claude every once in a while to kind of bring it all together into one place so everything doesn't get scattered. And it actually did some pretty cool things here summarizing everything we've done before gave me like title setting which it included the year that we um got here including that it emerges from the north sea somewhere between denmark and france close to england and scotland the main character is ragnar lothbrok the premise is this which is true it gave me a couple of plot points that happened in between in the middle it gave me the climax and the resolution that we had established Gave me some themes which we hadn't really established, but they kind of fit. Um, and I actually really liked this format. It was a really good summary. And I've noticed so far that ChatGPT seems to be better at this sort of thing than Claude, at sort of summarizing and categorizing information in a way that is easy to read and scan through. Um, that, that's just one of those little things that I noticed. Uh, but then I said, can you brainstorm 10 different plot or character twists for this no novella, drawing inspiration from the work of Brandon Sanderson, who is very good at plot twists? Since this is going to be a novella inspired by an idea from Brandon Sanderson, I thought, well, we should give it some kind of good plot twist because that is something he is known for. And then it gave me a bunch of things. None of these were really earth shattering plot twists. But there were two that I kind of liked. Uh, I liked this one about a double agent. Um, one of Ragnar's trusted warriors is secretly a member of the cult using their position to sabotage the Vikings efforts from within. I thought, okay, we could maybe do something like that. And then I saw this one, which said benevolent cult. The cult's intentions are revealed not to awaken the God, but to keep it asleep. Their attacks on the Vikings are to prevent Ragnar from inadvertently causing its awakening. And I realized if I were to kind of mash these two ideas together i could get something kind of fun and so spoiler alert if you uh you know if you're going to be following along with this with me on this journey you will know how this ends uh but if you don't for whatever reason uh you want to wait until it comes out just you know stop now but i'm going to put these two together and basically make it so he has some kind of blind seer um which was a suggestion somewhere in here that i kind of liked who when they discover this rune stone thing on this island um is translating it and saying hey we need like there's a cult that's going to be coming after this to try and stop it or, or to try and open it up and we need to stop that from happening and so somewhere in the middle of the novella they're going to be fighting this cult while this seer is doing something to the runestone. And then we find out that the seer was actually the one opening the portal and the cult wasn't actually a cult. It was a group of benevolent people that were trying to stop the Vikings from opening this portal. And I thought that could be kind of a cool way to go about it. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it gave me these twists. I asked it to give me 20 more because sometimes when you ask it to give you more, it thinks a little bit harder and gives you something that's a little bit better um, but ultimately that was as far as I got uh, and so what I did is I went to Atticus and marked all of this down so I marked down the summary that it gave me and I kind of went through this and modified it myself to be a little bit more like what I'm trying to to figure out and then I added this little bit about the plot twist um, kind of, I, you know, this wasn't copy and pasted from ChatGPT, even though ChatGPT gave me the ideas. Um, like I said, I kind of mashed them together. So I kind of added my own thing here where it said, the cult's intentions are revealed not to awaken the god, but to keep it asleep. Their attacks on the Vikings are to prevent Ragnar from inadvertently causing its awakening. A blind seer in Ragnar's employ who told him that they needed to close the rift is the one who actually opens it while Ragnar and his men are fending off the benevolent cultists. It is this blind seer's work that opens a portal to Helheim, where the monsters are located. The Vikings eventually have to fight these monsters, and Ragnar must fight the blind seer who has eldritch, eldritch mag magic. And then, just as a note to myself, because 
uh, a lot of my brainstorming happens as I am just jotting these ideas down. I said, the cult should be related to the fairy queen in some way, part of her order. They have strange organic looking armor that can account for why they appeared fearsome and were mistaken for cultists earlier. The fairy queen throughout the novella should try to communicate with Ragnar in his dreams, but Cthulhu is interrupting these dreams, twisting them, which is why Ragnar thinks that the fairy queen and her minions are actually a cult. So this is an element I'm drawing in from my fairy queen series, uh, which I am currently in the middle of writing uh, because I figured there was actually a really good opportunity to include some elements from that. It would make sense for the style of the novella and for the mythic elements that I'm using. And so basically the product of that whole chat session was this really nice and fleshed out concept. And so in the next video, at least in this series, we're going to be getting into the next step, which will probably be world building, maybe characters. And I'll be doing it first with Claude with the first novella and then doing it with ChatGPT with this novella. So you're probably wondering what are some of the differences between Claude and ChatGPT and for this particular use case for brainstorming, I actually didn't find that much of a difference because brainstorming really involves more of just asking questions and getting getting a couple of ideas, but most of it still happens in your head if you're doing it right. Most of the actual brainstorming is happening in your head. Um, and AI can get you a few ideas that you can bounce off of. But as you can see, this what I ended up in here very little of this was exactly what the AI told me. The AI just kind of pointed me in a certain direction and then I took it from there. Um, but it was a really productive brainstorming session as was the one I used with Claude. And so honestly, I felt like the answers in the, in the AI output for when I would ask it questions or to give me 10 ideas to do X, Y, Z, I felt like it was roughly the same uh, with both Claude and ChatGPT. The only thing I liked about ChatGPT that Claude did not do was format, when I asked it for a summary, it formatted everything into these really handy scannable sections, which is not something that Claude did. It, Claude just gave me a few paragraphs uh, of summary, but they were both accurately summarizing everything. So, um, so if I had to give it a slight edge, I would give it to ChatGPT, but really they were about the same. So those are my thoughts on ChatGPT and using it for brainstorming. I will see you in the next video.